So in this, uh, picking up where we left off in the second segment, uh, rendering our stone bare, I'm just uh, now going to address the lower half a bit more. So where we had a sphere and we circled around, we're not doing that now. <laughs> I'm actually following the texture. The texture at this point is more important, but I am actually circling a little bit because even as I develop texture, I actually also go in and uh, continue to pay attention to tone. One thing I note is I need darker darks. So, let's see, what did I have in my hand there before? I think I had a 70. I pick that marker up and Literally, I mean, this could actually be an 80. That's an 80. We'll do it. We'll do it with an 80. We'll ride the rapids here. And um, so now I'm adding with a little more finesse and a little more controlled gesture. I'm adding these dark shapes, this little pattern that you see. And you notice I'm curving around the object subtly. stop right there. That is just a first run at it. Next thing I do is I'm going to soften what I just did while it's still drying. Just kind of fuzz out some of the edges of those shapes. They're still there but they're pushed back. You can hear my scrubbing. I'm pushing into the marker a little bit. That's what I do when I want to uh, soften marks I've made. Not too much of that because you don't want to raise the nap of the paper. And here's where we really start to tighten up. Now we're going to pull out some of these exquisite shapes in here. So on the back side there is this lighter area. I'm actually going to bring that back with a white pencil. and then blend it in and then actually come back in with a dark marker around it on top of it a little bit and an even darker marker and that's how you, you bring it back into focus basically with that little segue I did there with um, lighter marker, then pe white pencil, then darker marker. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm actually bringing up the, the texture, but I'm also now addressing tone again with the separation between the two feet. And you can see that the dramatic difference between this area and this area. This area is starting to come to light. More contrast, a little more sharp detail. If you ever watch speed renders, digital renders, uh, as well as traditional, uh, it's really interesting to watch how a piece evolves. Uh, especially if you speed up the playback. <laughs> you can see that uh, typically an artist will work back and forth, overshoot the mark, then undershoot it, uh, compensate, even blot out areas that they just did. Always working very kind of, uh, I would say almost instinctively, after a while when you get comfortable with the media, it's just like drawing uh, out of your head. You're actually rendering and adjusting continuously without even thinking about it. You're just following uh, what you see in the way a piece is evolving. I'm going to leave that right now. I've actually brought up more of the roundness than you see in the reference. I'm now going to go back down to this uh, lower sa side down here. And I'm going to start by re-wetting and going back to, uh, let's see, 40% gray. We'll start with that. Start to darken down here. And you see, I, I changed my pattern because I want to see that modeling. hear the stroke as I kind of 
skitter in these marks. So occasionally take a little rivulet of material and push it in a different direction. Now I've got to establish the front of the feet. So here I'm just going to block in to get because the tone's too light. Even at this late stage, I'm still following the sequence of block in your tone, get it established, then actually start the texture render. So I'm going to layer on top of the top of the feet because they now look too light. Again, you can see how that happens progressively working into the material because you have to reestablish contrast. Here's the wrap of the texture. It goes onto the face of the feet and it goes straight down, more or less, unless it actually turns within the material. Right here, I'd like to get this edge to show up a bit more, so let's actually bring in a little bit of black pencil there. That edge then uh, smooths out curves there. Uh, kind of like the way that went, so I'm going to do it on the other foot. I tend to do common areas at the same time while I'm working on them because I want them to have the same appearance and it makes sense to work similar areas the same way I use the same marker and find the same, similar tones around the entire object. It maintains continuity in the rendering. I don't get too far along in any part of the render uh, before I move on to another part and then I come back to that area and then readdress it. Bring up a highlight, a little bit of a sheen, and you notice I just switch from linear to blend. And same thing down here, I'm actually going to bring up that lower corner, with a, start with a line and then a stroke, and then just blend out. And just to show you how that works, switch to marker, blend it in, get the wax to blend in with the marker, that way you can actually work with it again and uh, redraw with pencil on it, which is another uh, nice trick to learn is that you have to blend pencil in enough into the marker if you want to be able to draw it and again and do like fine sharp shapes. Right here I'm going to knock back that aggressive texture. I like that a little better. And like I say this is not a finished render. I'm kind of speed rendering this guy. Just to show you techniques and strategies as I go along. Now right here I'd like to show how the texture wraps onto this spherical shape. So I'm, I'm now ready to do that. So I'm breaking that highlight, that point. Come back with a 10 and I'm going to soften that because really I made this artificially show up here, this change, this little highlight on the inside edge. It actually does not exist on the render, I mean on the, the reference. But again, I'm an illustrator. I'm, I'm trained to define changes in direction on the surface, so I'm going to put a highlighter. This is what I mean about improvising. You know, you, you want to try to make your render better than the reference. So I just did that little uh, specular highlight, and then I blend it in. So I knock it back, which simply means to darken it a bit. and proceed to work in other areas. So down here at the bottom I'd like to get more of this detail coming in. So let's work the white pencil for a little bit. I'm in drawing mode again. You can lead with a white pencil on a mid-tone surface like this or you can lead with a black pencil. I probably more often lead with white. I led with black up here and it worked out fine because there wasn't too much dark. If there was a lot of dark, I might switch, start with a white, because uh, putting white pencil over a black does not work out very well if you have to put down a lot of black pencil. It uh, buries the paper, it starts to burnish, and you lose control. go into blend mode a little bit more to get it to look more like the, the reference. A little less linear drawing, a little bit more just flowing 
um, lens over here. I'm going to connect some of this stuff. Uh, you will find if you if you lose concentration, you'll start repeating at regular intervals. Again, it breaks the natural pattern. Marble is very random. Uh, it doesn't tend to repeat itself. It tends to so dark dark shapes don't tend to repeat at the same distance apart. Got to sharpen up my pencil here. Because I broke the tip off. Okay. And but you can see this this is called glazing by the way. With a light marker, I just blend over everything else and it pulls it together. It has this magical quality of just pulling everything together. I'm gonna do one last little thing. I'm going to just start a uh, cast shadow because I want to set the object down and see what that would look like. It's kind of a finishing touch, you know. Just to, I like to show how an object sits on a surface. In fact, you know what? Let's go really dark. Sit it down really nicely on that surface. And again, I'm breaking from the reference, but that's okay. Direction of my light source is like that. soften it and feather it out as it goes into the distance. And you kind of get the idea. This would make a nice kind of loose sketch to show. And you can see each time I do this, this is like the fourth pass over this area in terms of adding texture. And each time I'm getting a little more detail, a little more specific kind of learning that texture as I go. What does it really look like? How does this pattern go across the face? And you can see it gets a little more real each time and I blend it in each time and each time I blend it in a little bit more layering gives it a little bit more of a glow as I do that. 